It's time for some crystals now. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Oh, wait. I've got my wand. This is a giant selenite wand. I'm going to be bashing some people with this in a minute or two because I got something to say. <laughs> Just, I got something to say. <laughs> Y'all need to sit down because Auntie Pan Pan is here and I'm going to be ripping some people a new one. So shut up, sit down. No, I'm kidding, guys. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, so here's the deal is that I saw it online and I kind of waited. I went to Vegas instead first to percolate how I felt about this and I watched on YouTube this guy who ripped apart another uh, uh, popular YouTube artist, goth influencer. This took me a long time to come up and say this because I didn't want to say anything. Because I figured this is nothing, this is not my happy hayride. I wasn't going to say a squat. I wasn't going to say a word. And then I started thinking about it when I was in Vegas. And your mind illuminates after you win $30 at the, you know, at the slot machine after your fifth strawberry daiquiri. I should say something. <laughs> Just kidding. Now, actually, this has been percolating for a while. Okay, for the record, some friends of mine, uh, in fact, some of my friends who work over at Pins and Maggots, I was very lucky and I was very fortunate to meet one of these said individuals that were being bashed on the internet, on the YouTube, by a few jealous people. And let me just say, I have had the pleasure and the privilege of meeting them. They're very smaller than they look. They're very compact size and very short. And just, eh, you just want to pick them up and take them with you. Um, so I was very lucky to meet um, one of these people that were being bashed upon. And after watching about 30 seconds of the video of the bashing, I was like, blink, nope, I'm not putting up with this. I'm gonna go have a sandwich, I'm done. There's a lot of jealous people in this world, okay? My mother once told me that their world is comprised of two individuals in life. Those that have, and those that hate the ones that have. That, that's it. That, that, that's just it. You know, the haves are the have-nots. And I can't say, there are some that have not and are happy. They're truly happy. And they're happy with what they've got. And be happy with what you have. You know, then the ones that do get things, they've got what they got and they're happy. Then you've got ones that are miserable because they don't have what the other person has. And ladies and gentlemen and all my friends, that is how wars start. Because someone is jealous that somebody else has something else better on the sand lot. Okay? That's, that, that's it. That's it. So, the goth snob tag. I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't. Until I saw somebody that I met who had been nothing but nice to me, nothing but adorable, basically thrown upon the coals. And I'm going to say it just like that, because that's exactly what it was. Because it was somebody who was jealous. My blood pressure just got boiling. I, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Maybe I should have gone to yoga. You know? But it just, uh, it was annoyance. And normally I just let that go and go, all right, more strawberry daiquiris for me. Woo! But in this case, I thought it was only fair that Auntie, me, said something. So I went to the, um, um, to the Metal Mama Goth, not Mama, was Mama Goth or Heavy Metal Mama? I'll have to get back to you on that. And um, they did a goth snob tag. And I was like, you know, that's perfect. What better way to say how I feel than to use their questionnaire? So without further ado, number one, what are your views on goth brands and their affordability? Oh, you know, I have the same problem with people that purchase in the vampire community clothing for special events and stuff like that. It's a big conundrum. You can spend $500 on a duct tape corset. It's still a duct tape corset. And it doesn't matter the amount of money you spend on stuff. 
It's the style of the quality. Cyrano de Bergerac said it best that you cannot top my panache. And that's what it's all about. It's not about what you wear, but how you wear it. And that's the truth of it. You know, so my views on goth brands, I have been to many times to, um, I've gone to the shrine sales, I've gone to Dolls Kill, I've gone to Black Craft Cult. Now when I say I've gone to, that means I have gotten in a car, walked into a store, because remember, I'm in California, and purchased something. Now, I have been blessed that I am a plus size girl. I'm a bigger than life personality. And I've never been steered wrong with the things that I've purchased. Then again, most of my clothing comes through places like Torrid, or I just kind of acquire them, or I make them, or I just seem to find things. It's a skill. It really is a skill because I was a costumer for years. And because I was a costumer and a prop person for years for many stage shows, I know how to find stuff. If I'm sitting there going, I need to find myself a duct tape corset or a corset with bats on it that all are green and neon with big sequins on them, I'm going to know how to get it. It's a gift. So my views on goth brands and their affordability, I mean, okay, Dolls Kill, are they a little pricey? Yeah, I would say so. But if you go to the big sales, not so much. If you go to Black Craft Cult, they're not as bad as you think. Their prices are really not as bad. You know, there are a lot of really good clothing stores out there that cater to the goth community or the vampire community or the cosplayer community. Let's just lump you all in that category, kids. And it depends on what you want. It really does. I mean, there's some beautiful jackets out there that are $700. Am I going to buy a $700 jacket? Hell no. But I do know how to make something that might work in that case. So are they pricey? Yeah, they're going to be pricey. The, the, Fredericks of Hollywood used to be pricey, you know, back in the 70s and the 80s. Pleaser used to be hella expensive. Now look at them. You know, come on now, guys. Make goth clothing has become more and more mainstream. That's the other thing, too, is the more mainstream things become, the cheaper it gets. It's the quality. It's economics. It's simple economics. Price of demand. Cost of demand. You know, everybody going to wear it. It's going to go cheap. Therefore, you want to be unique. Therefore, it's going to be more expensive. If you don't like it, then don't wear it. Uh, number two is buying goth brands selling out. I have no idea what you're talking about. I just, I have no clue. What, what could you possibly be talking about? Actually, this was a present from my friend Carolyn. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. I love this bag. Came from Killstar, I believe. I don't really know. I just know it's beautiful and I love it. And it has a big kitty cat on it. Big Luna kitty. But the thing is, it's, and again, Carolyn, I love you. Um, but the thing, is it pricey? It was pricier 20 years ago, if you wanted to buy something 20 years ago, it was even more expensive. So do not give me this song and dance of selling out. If you want a flat American Horror Story, wide brimmed black witch hat, go for it. You can find them at Forever 21. That's called fast fashion though. You want things that are timeless and that will last for a very, very long time. You don't want something that's fast fashion. Fast fashion, that's ridiculous. You want things that will stay with you, your personality. If your personality is constantly changing, you're going to have a closet bigger than Kelly Eden's. And by the way, I love Kelly Eden. I don't love the color pink, except when it's on Kelly Eden. Because <laughs> I love Kelly Eden. <laughs> She's adorable. So is it selling out? Yeah. No. It's finding what you want. And, you know, it's a business. It's an industry. Goth brands, buying goth brands, selling out. Um, goth brands are usually owned, usually owned by small entrepreneurs or small businesses. Therefore, how can they be selling out if they're, 
you know, they're basically squeaking by. You know, I want to, eventually I would like a Lux DeVille handbag too, but until I either save up for it, I would also like an Avelino Del Moray bag, but you know, as soon as I get the chance, it's on my list of things I want. And then there will be more things I want after I get that, and then that. This is how consumerism works, folks. That's how it works. Although I do really like the Mahofson bag by the wallet from Evelina Dumare. Ha! Anyway, moving right along. <laughs> Three, does DIYing make you more goth? No, it does not. DIYing makes you more creative. DIY doesn't make you more goth. It makes you more creative. Maybe making you more bohemian. Maybe making you more creative. Doesn't matter if you're a goth or not. If you're being creative and you're DIYing something, there's no label. Again, we're getting back into labels again, folks. Why are we doing that? Why do we have to have labels for everything? Stupid. But no, it doesn't make you more goth. DIYing, DIY or die. I've DIYed for years because I like sometimes the things I make better than what I see in the stores. Four, what music should you listen to to be goth? Um, Mel Torme. Yeah, Mel Torme is so goth. Frank Sinatra. Yeah, I think you should listen to Frank Sinatra to be goth. Yeah, yeah, actually I do listen to Dean Martin a lot. A lot of Dean Martin. I, 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 I think you should listen to whatever the hell you want. And if anybody tells you otherwise, they can go suck a duck. Because you can do what you want. You know, I'm 48 years old and I've survived this long. If you're new to this world, in this realm, and you're like, what am I supposed to listen to? So-and-so said I couldn't listen to this. I shouldn't do that. They can go F off. Listen to what you want, sweetheart. I have goth friends that love Britney Spears. How about that? I have a friend of mine that's so goth it's not even funny. They are a drag queen and they listen to, to Lana Del Rey and they love her. Is she goth? I don't think so. So you listen to what you want. It doesn't always have to be about the music. Yes, there's a lot of goth music in the community. Yes, is it always about the music? Not always. Maybe goth is a label that is now antiquated because we are individual people. Maybe we should call ourselves bohos or bohemians more. And by the way, just because you think you're a boho does not mean you go to Coachella. Just saying. New boho. Don't get me started on that. <sighs> Five. What is the minimum requirement to be considered goth? <laughs> Do you have some eyeliner? Eyeliner? Do you have the color black? Are you pierced? Do you skulk around in graveyards and listen to very bad violins? <laughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Are you wearing a fishnet shirt and draped upon a nightclub speaker going undead, undead, undead? Is this the thing? Is this the requirement? Because I'm pretty sure I've done that. Although I will tell you, I had a dream once that I had a black ice cream truck and it only played Bauhaus. <laughs> it's a dream I had once. So, okay, six. Should you maintain the goth aesthetic? Did I do that right? The goth aesthetic. At all times to be considered a true goth. Let me nail gun my hand to my head while I wane tragic. You know, I have a lot of friends in the corporate goth industry. I myself was in the goth. I, I am goth and I was in the corporate world for 9, 10, 12 years. And I can say that it doesn't matter. The, the goth aesthetic. You know, I always think of Abby from NCIS when I hear the word goth aesthetic and corporate goth. I always think of Abby. Polly Perrette from NCIS. She got her lab coat on, but she's still goth. That's all there is to it. And technically, is she goth or industrial? The mind ponders. Hmm. Again, labels. Ah, seven. Oh, should you maintain the gothic aesthetic? If you can, you can. If you can't, okay, well, well moving on. Seven. 
Are the big name YouTubers selling out, cashing in when they receive hauls from companies? F no. You tell me, this is where I get upset. Okay, this is where I get upset. Because I could see that some of the people that were irked at other people that were getting hauls and things like that, from like Killstar, from like, you know, several different other um, goth companies, but Dolls Kill and Killstar, yeah. You hear that one a lot. Kids, fam family, friends, lend me your paws and your ears, okay? You cannot tell me, and I, I, I must be shallow as hell, I'll admit it. If Killstar called me right now, I mean, seriously, if I got on the phone, boop, 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 hello, you know, if Killstar called me right now and said, hey, Pam, um, we've got a box here of really cool plus-sized goth stuff and some witchy hats and some really cool stuff we think you'd like. Could you post it on your YouTube channel, please? You do not think for a flickering, flashing moment of fantasy, I would not say, here's my P.O. box, which is also listed below, by the way. Here's my P.O. box. I, I'll just drive down there and come pick it up. I'll be right on the way. Do not tell me. Do not even tell me. Oh, I would never do that. I'm above that. I'm, it's just, no, it's selling out. I wouldn't do that. Okay, I'll, 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 I, okay, I, I, okay, all right, let's be real, let's be real here, most people would, I wouldn't do that, okay, Th then you wouldn't, I'm afraid that I have to admit, I, I have to own it, that if people want to send me free swag, and all I have to do is advertise it, you can bet your sweet bibby, I'm on that, like, like, Cheeto dust on my fingertips watching and binge watching Sabrina on Netflix. I can guarantee it. Um, so, you know, are you selling out? No. You know, some of these people have been doing this for so long, they do not earn as much as you think, okay? I'm on YouTube. I don't earn squat from YouTube, okay? I did not go the monetized route because I saw what it did to some friends of mine that had to change their website, move their page, move their channel, and the, the upkeep, the constant churning and the stress. I was like, I so do not need that. Mm -mm. Forget it. So, you know, I, I just, I come in here and blather and babble to you because I like to. And I'm weird like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think they sold out. I think they get some nice, pretty things that the only way they could really sell out is if they sell it on Poshmark when they're done with it. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think it's selling out. I, I really don't. And I think what happens is people get upset and they're saying, oh, they're selling out because they're not selling out. Does that make sense to you? These people are bitching about people selling out because they're not getting stuff to sell out to. It's that haves and that have not thing, okay? All right. Uh, eight. The big name YouTubers live their lives in public. Should they, should they expect privacy in their private lives? I grew up in Hollywood. I'm, I'm actually going to uh, end this up with a story. I grew up in Hollywood. I, I met a lot of famous people growing up. I met a lot of famous people working in the entertainment industry. I met a lot of famous people. I do not, for the life of me, remember half of them because I was working or I was living with or I was dealing with on a consistent basis. Years later, people would say to me, oh, did you get their autograph? Did you get a picture of them? You... No, because what was the point? So I believe even though you are in the public eye, there is what I believe called a modicum of dignity, okay? A modicum of dignity is when you have tact. I don't believe in paparazzi either. I hate paparazzi, and I'll tell you that on another day why. But you should at least give people a modicum of dignity to pull themselves together if something's gone fallen apart. Just a little one, okay? A little modicum of dignity and grace. So if they don't want that, if they want to share their whole lives, then that's, that's their prerogative. But if they just need that one little modicum of silence for a little while to take a step back and figure some things out, give it to them. Because we're humans. And humans need to respect each other. That's my opinion, though. 
Nine, what's your view on goths wearing different symbols that are aligned with different religions? Oh, my brain hurts. This is a topic onto its own. I'm going to do this for a different YouTube question because there's a lot there to cover. If you're a Satanist, sure, wear Satanist symbolism. If you're a pagan, wear whatever pagan path you go by, symbolism on whatever you want. If you're a Christian, wear whatever you want. Wear your Christian symbols and go forth. If you're, you know, I, I have some issues with certain people wearing certain things that aren't those religions. I literally the other day saw a girl who claims to be super, super Christian and she's wearing a giant Baphomet tank top with the symbol of Lucifer right on her top. And I'm like, do, do you know what that is? Oh, I got it from enter the name of the company here. And I'm like, uh, you might want to do a double take on your research on that because do you know what you're wearing? And they just kind of <gasps> know what you're wearing. I think the thing of the deal is, is that people are going to make what they're going to make. People are going to have symbols of different pentacles, pentagrams, baphomets, little baffies, you know, symbols of Lucifer, symbols of Set, symbols of Egyptology, symbols of all the symbols. Symbols that contain power, though, guys. That's the power that we put into it. It's basically, they supply the thing, you put the energy into it. And if you don't know what your symbols are, you're, it's like, if you don't know what you're watching, and if you're reading something you really don't understand, you, you're dabbling. And if you don't know what your symbols are you're wearing, or, you know, whatever. Now, if you don't care... That's one thing. If you're wearing a symbol, you know what it is, and you just don't care because I'm, I'm agnostic. I'm an atheist or something like that. Then go forth. Go forth and run amok in the streets with your tatas to the wind. But, you know, go forth. But the thing is, is if you don't know what you're wearing, maybe you might want to research that first. I'm just saying. That's, that, I don't, that's, that's more than I wanted to get into because there's a whole bunch of stuff that is... There are, there's a lot of witches that are very upset. Like, they're wearing all of our symbols. Maybe they're a witch, too. Maybe we should be thankful that there's stuff out there we can actually purchase now. I don't know. I, I, I have some mixed opinions on that. I'm going to do that on another sh on another episode. So hold on for me, okay? And ten, lastly, on this episode, number ten. How do you feel about the negativity, bullying, and elitism in the community? Ooh, that maybe you just said a mouthful. Um, the negativity in the community. It is full. There's a lot of elitism. Is there really? The, it's like going to a nightclub. You're going to find elitists. You're going to find cliques. It's like high school all over again. Is there bullying? Of course there's bullying. Is there elitism? Of course there's elitism. Is there just drama? I'm 48 years old and I've watched a full kegger of drama in the last two weeks. Ain't mine. Ha <laughs> ha! It's other people's. I just watch the show like it's cable. But the truth of the matter is, <sighs> it's an elitism. You really have to define the elitism that you, you're talking about. Now, I've unfortunately had the tendency, because I look different than some goths, and I look different than some witches, and I look different than some people in the vampire community. They take one look at me and go, not you. You're different. You're not the traditional style or type. But you know what? F that. I'm here. And I am a character. And I am enjoyable. And I like to have a good time. And I'm fun. And if they don't like it, they can dig it or F off. And that's true to be said. I know, I, I actually got to run into somebody in a public restroom recently who is a model in the goth community and in the, the darker edge of the community. And I was talking to them and they're like, they don't even know, you know, how hard it is to look this good. And she's like, and, and she's like, it's hard. And, and, you know, and I sit here and I try so hard to look my best and be my best and I still get people that <sighs> give her this attitude just 
because they think she thinks she's better than them. Do you see what I'm saying there? They think she thinks she's better than them. Guys, sometimes the prettiest picture in the window is just as insecure as looking in a mirror. On that note, think about that. So that was my tag. So go forth. I want to thank you guys. Have a blessed day. Zen hugs to everybody and just chill and don't think about labels so much. It just gives you migraines and gas. Who wants that? Love you. Bye-bye.